Hi there, I'm Jason Ayers, founder and president of Optionsource.net, and thank you for joining us to learn about the intrinsic and time value of an option premium. An option premium or price is made up of two components, time value and intrinsic value. Since options are time sensitive, the time value component of an option contract erodes to zero as the expiration date approaches. If an option is in the money, the premium will also reflect an intrinsic value. This is the real value of the option that is determined by the difference between the option strike price and the price of the underlying security. A call option is characterized as being at the money when the price of the underlying security and the strike price of the option is the same or very close. For example, let's say that XYZ is trading at $50 per share and the XYZ one month $50 strike call option is trading at $2 per contract. Remember that the option premium are, is listed on a per share basis and each contract represents 100 shares. In this example, the call option buyer has the right to buy the shares at $50. With the shares of XYZ trading at $50, this option has no intrinsic value. With XYZ trading at $50 per share and a call strike price of $50, the option premium is made up entirely of time value. If the share value does not increase within the one month time frame, the time value component will depreciate and the option will expire worthless. A call option is referred to as being out of the money when the stock is less than the strike price. For example, with shares of an underlying security trading at $45 per share, an XYZ one month call option with a 50 strike might be trading at 30 cents. By purchasing the call option, the option holder has the right to buy shares of the underlying security at $50. Since the stock is currently trading at $45, this option is considered to be out of the money and has no intrinsic value. With the share price at $45, the 50 strike option is made up entirely of time premium. As with the at the money option, if the share value does not rise above the strike price by the expiration date, the option will expire worthless. A call option is referred to being in the money when the stock is greater than the strike price. If XYZ is trading at $55 per share, a call option with a $50 strike and one month until expiration might have a premium of $5.50. In this case, the call buyer has the right to own the shares at $50. With XYZ trading at $55 per share, the call option has a $5 intrinsic value. With a 50 strike and XYZ trading at $55, the $5.50 premium can be broken down into two components. By subtracting the strike price from the stock price, we can determine that the option has an intrinsic value of $5. We then subtract the intrinsic value from the premium to determine the time value, which in this example is 50 cents. A put option is referred to as being at the money when the price of the underlying and the strike price of the option is equal or close in value. With XYZ trading at $50 per share, a one month 50 strike put may be trading at $1.90. In this example, the put buyer has the right to sell the underlying shares at $50. However, since the share value is equal to the strike price of the put, there is no intrinsic value. The $1.90 price of the option is made up entirely of time premium, which means that if the share value does not drop below the strike price of the put, the option will expire worthless. A put option is considered to be out of the money when the share value of the underlying security is greater than the strike price. With XYZ trading at $55 per share, the XYZ one month put option with a $50 strike price might be trading at 25 cents. In this case, the put buyer has the right to sell XYZ shares at $50. However, since the shares are still trading at $55, the put option has no intrinsic value. With the share value priced at $55 and a $50 strike, the $0.25 cent put premium is made up entirely of time value. 
If the share value remains above $50, the put option will expire worthless. A put option is characterized as being in the money when the share value of the underlying is less than the strike price. With XYZ at $45 per share, a 50 strike put option with one month until expiration may be trading at $5.40. The put buyer has the right to sell the underlying shares at $50, even though XYZ is trading at $45. We determine the intrinsic value of the put option by subtracting the share value from the strike price. In this example, a $50 strike minus a share value of $45 reflects an intrinsic value of $5. The $5.40 premium can be broken down into two parts. By subtracting the $5 intrinsic value, we can determine that the time value component of the option premium is $0.40. Cents. If the share value remains the same, the time value component will depreciate to zero, leaving only the intrinsic value. As with the call option, an in-the-money put will be exercised automatically if it has an intrinsic value or real value on expiration. Which option to use will depend on the objectives of the trader or investor. Each category of options has certain advantages and disadvantages. An at-the-money option will begin to reflect an intrinsic value as soon as the underlying starts to move in the anticipated direction. These options tend to be the most liquid. The disadvantage is that these options are the most expensive from a time value perspective. Out-of-the-money options require the least amount of capital and provide the investor or trader with the greatest amount of leverage. However, a greater move in the underlying is necessary to realize an intrinsic value. As a result, the time component of the premium will erode much quicker and consequently out-of-the-money options have a higher probability of expiring worthless. An in-the-money option will be more expensive because the intrinsic value is added to the time value of the premium. Because an in-the-money option is more expensive, the option buyer has a less leveraged position. However, the impact of time depreciation is lessened. The disadvantage of an in-the-money option is that it requires more capital up front to purchase and can lose its intrinsic value very quickly with an adverse move in the underlying security. Once the intrinsic value disappears, time depreciation will accelerate.